Welcome to another edition of the CS Podcast, where you can hear interviews with special guests such as Dayon Buchanan, Tom Waddle, Pierre Desir, Brent Barry, Ed Werder, and many others. Too big, too strong, too fast, too good. So be sure to subscribe and tune in to the CS Podcast on YouTube at youtube.com slash christianre722. Did you not get the memo? That's www.youtube.com slash christianre722. For great interviews, be sure to check out the CS Podcast. You are ridiculous! Welcome back to the CS Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Shanafell, and I'm now joined by 2015 NFL Draft Prospect, defensive back out of Boston College, Manuel Espria. Thanks for taking some time to chat, Manuel. How's it going? It's a pleasure to have you on, and let's get right to it. Coming out of Everett High School in Massachusetts, you played both defensive back and wide receiver. You had a lot of success at both positions. I just want to start off by asking you a pretty simple question, and that is, coming out of high school, how did you decide to attend Boston College and play for the Eagles? Well, uh, I wanted to play offense in college, and BC was telling me that I would only play defensive back, so I kind of did not want to go to BC. And then I realized that it was close to home and I wanted to stay close to my family and the school was a great academic school. So I decided the Boston College was right for me. And you've seen playing time right away, man. Well, as a freshman, you started four of the nine games that you played in. And as a sophomore, you became one of the bright spots on that BC defense and was a full-time starter. You started all 12 games that season. Now, those first two seasons were pretty solid for you individually. But as a team, it was rough. You guys went 6-18, and and the head coach at the time, Frank Spaziani, was let go after the 2012 season. How much of an impact did Coach Spaziani have on you in attending BC coming out of high school? And what was your reaction when the news first came out? Well, actually, I have to thank him because he gave me an opportunity that many schools did not want to give me. So there's really nothing bad to say about him. Even in those those two seasons, that were probably the worst seasons I've ever had in my football career. Hmm. But, you know, when I first got the offer, it was it was crazy. I didn't know what to say. Like, I didn't commit right away, but I just was astonished that he gave me an offer like right off the bat, like most schools said they were going to give me one, but they didn't fall through or like we, I lost contact with them, but he stuck to his word and he gave me the opportunity that many schools were not willing to give me. And of course, Steve Adazio is the head coach at BC right now, and he's done a great job over the past couple of seasons. And man, well, it seems like you really didn't even skip a beat with the coaching change. As a junior in 2013, you recorded a career-high 68 tackles, seven tackles for loss, a forced fumble, six pass deflections, and two interceptions. Pretty impressive stat line, no doubt. Now, with all that being said, what were your expectations for this past season, knowing that it'll be your final go-round at the college level? NFL talking with 2015 NFL draft prospect, defensive back out of Boston College, Manuel Espria. And Manuel, this past season was another impressive one for both you and your team. Individually, you were able to record 61 tackles, 9 pass breakups, and 4 tackles for loss. As a team, the BC Eagles finished the regular season 7-5. and five. It was actually the most successful season Boston College's football team has had since you've arrived. Just a few days ago, you guys played in the New Era Pinstripe Bowl against Penn State, and it was really a great game. Went down to the wire, and unfortunately, you guys came up one point short, losing the game 31-30 to in overtime. It hasn't even been a week yet, but has it sunk in yet that you've played your final college football game? Yeah, I think about it. I've been thinking about it since the game ended, you know. I, I lay down in my bed, and I'm like, dang, that was my last career game, college football career game, and, you know, it, it, it hurts more and more every day as I think about it. But, you know, I, I know that I got to move on to the next level, or at least try to move on to the next level. Right, right, and you guys played a lot of uh, great games this season, man. Well, one that I want to actually single out is the Week 11 matchup against Florida State. You guys uh, definitely gave the Seminoles a run for their money. What was it like to compete against last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Jameis Winston, and the defending BCS National Champs? He's a great player, you know, and I've always prided myself on playing the greatest players. I've always wanted to play the greatest players in the country. You know, I didn't come to play Division One football, you know, to play competition that I didn't 
it feels right. I'm not saying that there aren't great competition on the other levels, but I, I've always wanted to play the best, you know, because I've always been an underdog, so playing against the best has always been, like, my thing. And, um, you know, he's a great player, but we play players just like him. You know, I don't look at him as uh, somebody special or famous. I just look at him as another great player that we face every week. So obviously losing your final college football game isn't the way you want to end your BC Eagles football career. But like I said, this was the best season you guys had in a handful of years. So I got to think there's some positives to take out of it. How would you describe not only this past season, but your overall college football experience at Boston College? It's probably the greatest experience of my life. Uh, my first year is we experienced dark times and, you know, we stuck through with it and, you make a lot of great friends on the team. You meet a lot, a lot of great people. And then you get to experience the coaching change, which is really tough. You know, they come in, they don't know who you are, so they do whatever they want. And then you got to, it's like starting right from scratch all over again, you know, and it was my, what, junior year this happened. And then I'm thinking, oh, I might be done. Like, everything might be over. I got new coaches. I got the people won't like me and everything. And then all of a sudden, I realized that these coaches are great people. And, they really look out for us, and I have a lot of respect for them. They change the BC football way and turn around those dark times to some great times. And, you know, they just made the experience great for, for us. And, Manuel, as a freshman, you were able to share the same field with Lou Keekley, who's now arguably the best linebacker in the National Football League. I know you're a defensive back, and this may be tough to answer, but what do you think separates him from other linebackers? I really don't know. He's just something else. Like even when I was there, like, I didn't, I didn't even notice who he was until he stepped on the field. To be honest, out in out in public, he was a regular person, and then on that field, it was just he was just a whole different animal. He's just something I just never seen in anybody else. He always was there to make plays. He knew where the play was going before the plays were even called. I, I can tell you that much. Hmm. He would call out the plays. He even would look back and tell me what route was going to be ran before they ran the route. <laughs> That's great. Chris Shanfell talking to 2015 NFL Draft prospect, cornerback out of Boston College, Manuel Espria. Manuel, throughout your entire college football career, who would you say is the best or most impressive player that you've had to line up against? Best, most impressive? It'd probably be DeAndre Hopkins, believe it or not. Sammy Watkins is a great player. There's a lot of Rashad Green, a lot of great players. But DeAndre Hopkins, his route running was incredible against me. I may have been young too, but I just, and I, don't, I don't know, he was the first person to actually beat me deep on just a simple route that I thought I was going to have covered completely. Definitely having a lot of success with the Houston Texans nowadays as well, yeah. so uh, <laughs> definitely can't go wrong with DeAndre Hopkins. Definitely has a bright future. Uh, if you had to single out one, what's the uh, biggest or most memorable play that you've made uh, throughout your time at Boston College? Probably my sack freshman year. <laughs> it was against Florida State. It was home. We lost that game bad, but that that play, I don't know, there was something about it. I've had interceptions in my career and other great plays, but that was the first time I made a big play on, on a big stage on national TV. And, you know, even though we were losing that game, I was very excited. My whole team was excited. It was almost as if that play was put us in the league or lead or anything. Boston College has certainly had their fair share of guys that have made it to the NFL. I mentioned Luke Keekley. Uh, this show is actually broadcasted out of Chicago, and the Bears have a young cornerback, Al Lewis Jean, who I think has a ton of potential. Is there any chance that you've been able to talk to anybody, whether it's either, either of those two guys or not, that has had any type of experience at the next level, and have they given you any advice as to what to expect during the draft process? I mean, I talked to, to Albert a lot, actually, more than when he was here, because I've seen him more than when he was here. But I've talked to him a lot lately, but I don't really ask him about the whole draft process and everything. Because, you know, he, he, what he told me was that, you know, I just got to believe in myself and believe that everything's going to work out for the best. I can't let any, any stop in the road stop me from what I want to uh, achieve. Any goals I have, I have to just go go do what I have to do to, to reach my goals. That's all he told me. He told me not to worry about anything else. Things are going to happen. You know, it's life. This is... All right, and sounds I good. To Kevin Pierre Lewis, and mm-hmm. he basically said the same thing. You just, just got to do what you have to do. Sounds good. Now, you, you've had four solid years at Boston College. What do you feel is your biggest strength as a defensive back? My heart. <laughs> you know, you, I have a lot of heart. It's not really much. Um, you know, I I got better as the years went on with covering. I wasn't really a coverage defensive back. You know, I'm, I'm really small on my side, so, so they say. And... I just believe that going out there and just, it's all about heart. You, you got to tell yourself you 
that you can do it. If somebody, you can let somebody tell you that you can't do something, then it's going to stop you from doing what you what you wish you or you plan on doing with your life. And I, I tell myself, I'm going to go out there and give my all every play, every game. That's what I did. I gotta say, I've never heard the answer heart uh, as the biggest strength, but I, but I love it, man. I mean, you definitely have to have love for the game of football to really just have success at the college level, uh, and that's not even mentioning, uh, you know, having the possibilities of playing in the National Football League. Um, what about weakness? You, you mentioned your height. What are you, like 5'11"? I mean, uh, w- would you say that's your biggest weakness? Yeah, that's one of my biggest weakness, my height and weight. Mm-hmm. And let's say there's an NFL general manager listening to this very interview. Why should he want defensive back Manuel Espria out of Boston College a part of his team? every day um, there might be uh, something that I, I should be doing like where he an expectation I will go past the expectation I try to uh, try to do more than what I should be doing because I feel like that is the right thing to do I don't try to settle for less I always try to settle for more and you know I, people I, I can take advice people criticize me all the time I don't take criticism uh, something that is wrong, I take criticism right lightly, and I, I let them know. Like, I, I thank them for all the advice, and I really take it into consideration what people say. You know, people are watching me; they they know what's right. I might not know something. I don't think that I know everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When did you realize that the NFL may not only be a dream, but it could become a reality? I mean, here we are talking about the possibilities of playing in the NFL. It became a reality my senior year because. You know, freshman and everything, everybody comes in, all freshmen come in, they think that they're just going to do three years and then go to the NFL and everybody has the same dream. But, you know, when I, when I first played my first two years, yeah, it was a rough time for us. And I actually was not thinking about the NFL because of how bad things were going. And then junior year, things changed around a little bit, and I was thinking about it a little more. I was about to make my decision. But then when senior year came around, and I realized the difference between me, me, freshman year, me, senior year, and a lot of coaches coming into the practices and coaches talking about what I want to do after football, college football is over. That's when reality really hit me that I have a great opportunity of playing in the NFL. Why do you believe you deserve a shot in the National Football League? Everybody deserves a shot in the National Football League. Hmm. But I just feel like, you know, I mean, I didn't do all this all my life just to stop here. You know, I'd rather instead of just not even trying or not getting an opportunity, I feel like if you've played football all your life and you've always had this dream, this is something you should get an opportunity to do whether it works out or not. It might not work out the first day. It might take a little time. You know what I'm saying? It might, it might be a whole year before I, I actually get the opportunity to play. And you never know. You know, It's just that one, one chance to know whether or not I could have done it or I, I could not. I don't want to live my life like guessing or saying what if I did this or what I did if I did that. I want to be able to say I did do this and it didn't work out. I'd rather be able to say that rather than a what if. Chris Schaffel talking to 2015 NFL draft prospect defensive back out of Boston College. Manuel Espria here on the CS Podcast. And Manuel, just a few more questions before I let you go. I really do appreciate your time. I got to think scouts have been in and out of BC to see you and some of your teammates. Any chance you've been able to speak with any of them or have any idea what they might be saying about you? Uh, I don't actually don't like to listen to anything like that. Like when they come in, I don't. I pretend like they're not even for me, even if they are for me. Mm-hmm. Think they're to see me or not? I just it's not something that was on my mind at the moment. What was on my mind was the games that were there. You know, you only get a, a you, you only promised so much. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was like I didn't want to hear what people were saying about me or if they were looking at me. To me, it was all about the team. I had to focus on how would I how would I win the next game? What are, what can I do to win help win the next game to contribute to another win and contribute to a great season? I wasn't thinking about oh I what do I need to get to the NFL? That was it would be seem selfish of me to think that way when my team is dependent on what I can bring to the table to help. All right, all right, and, and last but not least, here's a fun one to end the interview, man. Well, what's something about yourself that many people may not know? <laughs> something about myself. Um, I like cartoons. <laughs> I'd rather watch cartoons than watch like watch NFL games. I'd rather watch cartoons than almost anything. You know, people always ask me what I'm doing, and I say I'm chilling. But they don't really know what I'm doing. They want to go to the club. I'm too busy watching cartoons and eating Oreos.
Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> you, you have a favorite? You have a favorite cartoon? Bugs Bunny. Oh, Bugs Bunny. All right, all right. My favorite. <laughs> Hey, you can't go wrong with the old school cartoons, man. Well, uh, I really do appreciate your time, though, man. It was great talking to you. Congrats on a successful college football career. Uh, I'm wishing you nothing but the best throughout this process. Do you have anything else for us before I let you go? Um, That's it. Thanks. Appreciate your time. All right, cool. Thanks, man. Well, I really appreciate it. Take care.